Hello, welcome to a new video. Today, I am finally looking at the Ugreen Nexode Pro 65 watt and 100 watt versions. These have been very requested since I posted the 160 watt review. So while I struggle to open the boxes on these adapters, actually no struggle, these open very easily, hopefully a sign of things to come. The video is more about the electrical performance of these adapters, not what they plug into. So the efficiency, output voltage, etc. on these. But as usual, they will be compared for value and performance with some near competitors. Ugreen has had this line out for a little while now, and in looking at the online reviews, the 65 watt seems to be generally accepted as okay, but the 100 watt may present with some problems. I've looked at a lot of chargers, and generally, I don't find anything new among any chargers, hence less videos of late, but hopefully this video will be useful to people when making a choice for a charger. There's affiliate links, which earn me a couple percent, but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. First up is the 65 watt power adapter. This adapter is a very typical example of a USB power adapter. Foldable plugs, three ports on the end, and in general, a pretty small size and moderately good appearance. The packaging from Ugreen is better than it used to be, more paper, less plastic, and less packaging overall. It's not quite Belkin levels of optimization on packaging, but okay. The user manual for the 65 watt Pro adapter is not bad. It did give the individual port negotiation information. So with more than one device plugged in, you know which port is going to give you how much power. This is nice because the power sharing is not even. They give a little logo on the power adapter to say this, but it would be nice if the watts were just written on the adapter. Yes, plugs and unplugs will cause renegotiation of the other ports. In this case, it's pretty slow too, about one to two seconds before that change happens. The power adapter operates about as expected. The idle power consumption on this adapter is quite good. I think anything sub 0.1 watts is a pretty reasonable performance, and this hits that requirement without any issues. When turning the watts up, as expected, this thing looks like almost every other 65 watt charger on the market. The one thing to note is the PPS mode is a little weaker than some, 4.7 amp overload point at 11 volts out. The efficiency on this adapter was also a bit on the low end. Unfortunately, this is not what I like to see as sometimes this leads to thermal issues. We will be checking that out later on. On the positive, the voltages were relatively stable and the voltage ripple was okay. Next up is this 100 watt power adapter. This one is also the more conventional form factor with the wires out the end of the adapter and the foldable plugs. This adapter's three ports offer some good charging options for everything from PD capable laptops and down. One port at a time can deliver all 100 watts and the user manual does a good job of describing how these ports change with various devices plugged in. Because of the power sharing, these USB ports will renegotiate on plugs and unplugs just like the 65 watt cousin. Once it all gets plugged in, it works as expected. The idle power consumption is a little higher, which is kind of surprising since it's not much different than the 65 watt with nothing plugged in, but okay. It's still not terrible though. Once it's loaded up, it operates about as expected. It does have some off behavior when switching through the various modes, just like the 65 watt. The performance for this power adapter is what I call a tail of two adapters. It specifically doesn't turn on a circuit that corrects the AC current waveform until you put it into the 20 volt mode. So this isn't great, but beggars can't be choosers. I was hoping we were out of this era. Otherwise, the performance looks okay. This adapter also has something I don't like to see. It seems to be what PRO stands for. Less efficiency. Again. Is it me? Should I just not measure this and do reviews with no data? This would be the best thing since sliced bread if I didn't measure anything. Okay, joking aside, this thing is going to have issues if you drive it hard. The online reviews seem to corroborate this story, unfortunately. On the other data points, the adapter looks good. The ripple is lower than many competitors, and the voltages were stable and basically right on the target across the board. So that is a question for you. Is a little less efficiency okay if the adapter voltage is better? A power adapter that has any wires leaving the unit has to be able to survive damaging conditions like a short circuit. These power adapters did well here, safely shutting down during any overload conditions. Both of these units safely shut down under overload conditions. Okay, it's time to talk about thermal performance. Earlier this week, I put up a short and posted a question about the performance of these chargers, and wow, did I get a lot of comments on that one. So there were two camps, one much smaller camp that said, it's okay if it can't run for very long, as long as it's small. 
And then the camp that said, if you put 65 watts on the box, it better run forever at 65 watts. Well, these ran for 30 minutes in a 20 degree C environment and both chargers shut off. Yes, that was a full load. And so it's an aggressive test condition, but it's the number on the box. The efficiency being a little weaker means more heat and that shows. Well, let's compare these things. I decided to directly compare to the Anker Prime series of adapters, the 67 watt and the 100 watt. I know the new Anker 100 watt prime adapter is out and yes, I already have it. And yes, it's coming. Probably first look in a short this week, then a video next week. The Ugreen adapter's size were almost identical and if you were blind and I handed you either one, you'd probably just think they're slightly different versions of the same thing. The weights of these adapters are pretty close to each other. The Anker series is both heavier and lighter, but the margin is not very large. When comparing these for size and weight, they're in the same sport and certainly playing in the same division. In terms of the idle performance, the Ugreens are better. They take the edge here with a little bit lower idle power consumption. Taking a look at it in the chart form, it looks like quite a swing, but the data is fairly compressed here. So really, all of these are acceptable, and the Ugreen 65 watt is actually good. In terms of the average performance, these adapters average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE 6 efficiency, that means 25 to 100% load efficiency, this is where things falter. Anchor takes out both adapters in both categories. The anchors aren't the most efficient adapters either, but both do better here. And under heavy load, the anchor is about three watts less in power consumption, and that matters for the thermal performance. Three watts doesn't sound like much, but in a small constrained box, it is the difference between throttling and operating. All right, let's talk about value. Ugreen wins. These are less expensive. There is no real comparison here. Are there less expensive options out there? Sure, but these pretty well line up as a direct competitor to the Anchor products, so that's what they're being directly compared to. And if all that matters is price, there is a clear winner. In terms of the other specifications, they are almost exactly tied with each other in every category. So, Ugreen, 65 watts and 100 watt Nexode Pro USB power adapters, chargers, or whatever you want to call them. The future of power adapters, or just another offering from the machine that makes power adapters. First point, do they work? Yes, they do. They meet basic efficiency requirements and they operate in all of the claim modes without any apparent issues. So this is really good, but I've only tested like two chargers ever that didn't, so it's not a high bar. The 65 watt is probably the winner of the Nexode Pro bunch. It generally has positive reviews online and it seemed to function fine. The thermal issues aside, if you don't push this charger too hard, it should be a reasonable charger for a long time. It has a safety listing and the value of the charger is not bad. It is small and light and makes for a reasonable travel companion. The 100 watt, in my opinion, feels like a charger from 2020. I know so long ago. The efficiency is a bit behind the competition. The negotiation of USB modes is behind the competition. It bears the pro moniker, which in fairness, it doesn't define as anything, and it just doesn't have any meaning. Just another model to add to the list of USB chargers. This will not make it into my daily rotation, but as always, everyone has a different mix of devices, so it may be exactly the charger you need. From the four chargers, the Anker 100 Watt Prime is still the one I'm going to keep in my rotation. It's traveled the world with me already, and it will continue to do so. Maybe not for long. The new one is here and will be getting tested, I mean punished, over the next week. It will be interesting, but I think the 100 Watt adapter is the same adapter but with a matte plug and new marketing. Tick, tick, tick. Maybe they did redesign it, and it will kick out the reigning 100 Watt Bassius GAN 3 desktop charger that is still 3% more efficient. No idea how they pulled that off. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.